Hey, Richard. How you doing? Fine, Charles. How are you? Good, sir. So uh, I take it that you have your issue with the links straightened out, right? To the class? I guess so. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've been able to make it the last couple of times, so that's, that's a good sign. <laughs> we, we like that, you know, that you can actually get here. Yeah, it's a long walk from my bedroom to my office room. <laughs> oh, I know, yeah. Always happy to be here, though. Yeah. You might learn some. You might. You never know. You know. It happens every once in a while. I learn something nearly every time. Yeah. So that's good. Okay. Yeah. Let's see who we got Betty, we got you, we got Veronica. Okay. Slowly but surely, we got. I took your, I took your instructions on how to paint a face. Mm -hmm. And my wife said I need to paint and draw them at least a hundred times to get it right. I've drawn that thing at least ten times, and I've almost got it right. Not exactly, but I made progress on it. Yeah. Well, I saw what you sent in, and actually, we're going to look at that in the mix here. So. I can get everything except the except the nose and nose and mouth. Otherwise, I'm pretty good on it. Okay. Well, we're, we'll talk more about those. Okay. Because, um, yeah, I was glad that you, you tried to do that. And, uh, you know, I might be able to give you a few hints that might make it easier. So. I'll take all the hints I can get. <laughs> okay. So. We're here a little early, so we're waiting for well okay it is now time so all right so let's get going all right everybody have a good lunch hello yes yep 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 okay good lunch. we had a good lunch okay all right because we're gonna uh start going through some of the work that uh there wasn't really a lot of work sent in a lot of people sent in their statement and their photograph and stuff like that and uh I'm happy to say I've read through almost all the statements now and uh, and they're good. They're good. You know, they're short, concise, get to the point. You know, that's what we need to do. Okay. So let's, uh, let's start with uh, just going down the list here. And uh, there we go. Pull that up so everybody can see it. There we go. So everybody can see a, a painting with a lot of metallic gold on it, right? And a little yeah. bit of purple. Okay, good. All right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this uh, I looked at this on Monday, um, and this is from Izam. And uh, again, you know, she's she's doing more decorative, sort of abstract, uh, you know, painting pieces and. I'm guessing this is not real large, but uh, she's using, you know, metallic paint, and I'm pretty sure this is all acrylic. Uh, but notice that she's getting kind of a nice texture. See, so she's laying down probably some kind of base color, and then she's actually kind of scratching and, and making marks in it stuff. Uh, you know, to make it more textual, right? And she's mainly doing that on the outside here, even though she's got some in the center part of it. And, uh, you know, it, it adds a lot of richness to it. Now, after she did the texture, then I think she probably painted it out with gold. And then after the gold dried, then I think she went over it with and I'm not sure whether this is acrylic or India ink or what it is, but it looks like some kind of paint that she applied uh, either very thin, you know, and or she put it on and then she rubbed it back. You know, just kind of sponged it back a little bit. So, you know, it, it left some of the gold showing through. And 
that's actually you know a, a nice way of working with paint. You can create what we call open or you know open or broken paint passages, and uh, it adds a lot of richness you know to the surface. So let's say that I was doing uh, a patch of grass or ground or something like that. You know, I could take that same approach. You know, I could begin to lay in some paint and scratch through it and kind of create a texture as a base color and then come back in with a darker, like either glaze or wash uh, and, and go over it and then kind of push it around or sponge it back a little bit and get a variety of both texture and value that way. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a fairly quick way of working, you know, if you want to do stuff like that. But it, it creates interesting surfaces. And at the end of the day, you know, if you're going to be a painter, that's kind of what it's all about, is, you know, creating interesting surfaces to look at. Uh, because, you know, your painting may look great, you know, from, you know, 10 feet back, and all the values and things might work, but, you know, if you step up and all the color is flat, and just kind of monotonous, then that doesn't create a very interesting painting. Uh, you know, having interesting paint surfaces and broken color, things like that, make a painting a lot richer. Uh, then we have Bernice and drawings, Ber Bernice's drawing of Bernice. And uh, I, I like this, I like this better than the, uh, idea of an avatar or an emoji or something like that. But yeah, this is a, this is a really sweet little drawing of her. And uh, mm -hmm. now she's changed her hairstyle. She didn't give herself the, you know, the little, uh, you know, curls and stuff she has. I thought I did. I thought I did. <laughs> well, yeah, not, yeah, not quite. I mean, this yeah. seems, this seems to be kind of, you know, in, uh, where's my cursor? And let's blow this up so we can really look at it. See, you know, you, your hair is very curly, but you mm -hmm. see it's also kind of grouped together in these strands. Okay. Yeah. And you don't, you know, you don't get that feel so much. It's, this is more kind of consistent in texture, but that's fine. You know, this works, you know, really nicely. So, uh, you know, like I said, you just changed your hairstyle slightly, but uh, but I, I like the drawing of you, and uh, it's it's a good little drawing. So, the that, good that, job. That. Oh, really? Yeah. Because because I, I was going to redo it because oh, what I did was I drew the outline of my face. I thought first, and then I realized that what I did was, um, I I I put the eyes in as if it was full frontal. You know, uh, rather than you see the eyes are too far apart or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, you know, rather than having the side of the face, you you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I put I put, yeah I put it more. It's to me it's it's kind of off on the, on the right side. Mm -hmm. So I was going to redo it and I'm going to do another one in in a mirror. Okay. Well, but you think I should? Mm -mm. But, yeah. but you know what I'm talking about about the about mm -hmm. the one side of the face. Yeah. One yeah. thing I'll, one one thing I would say to you, and you know, I don't know how old this photo is of you, whether it's more two, two years, about two years, two. yeah. But mm -hmm. you've you've broadened the thickness of your face here. The distance seems to be uh, you know considerably wider than it but should. It, but it but it but it's wider because I'm not showing the side. I'm showing I'm showing the eye if, if they're looking front. More, I think I'm, as they, as they look at more front. I think the the um the eye on the right side, no, not the right, the eye on the left side should be closer, should be farther to the right. Um, yeah, probably a little bit. Okay. Yeah, and, and then, then it will show that that's the side of the face rather than the face is just wide. It's just it's just the face is turned yeah. more the side. Yeah. You, well, you, see, I'm looking from here to say the back of your ear. And I'm oh, looking okay. at the overall proportion of that to from your chin to say your hairline. Mm -hmm. And your face feels more, you know, the, the drawing feels more equal, you know, the same width as height. 
when I look at the photo, let's go look at that. See, it's actually, your face is actually longer this dimension oh, than it is okay. wider. Okay? By a little okay. bit. Not by a lot, but just by a little bit. You know, at least that's kind of my perception. Let's see. I have to really check that. Let's see. Go to the back of the ear. And then... I thought, I thought because I, did, I didn't turn it right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. It's just a, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a little bit longer. Just a little bit. Okay. So it's not, okay. it's, it's not quite, you know, same height, same width. Okay. So you okay. can handle that one of two ways. Okay. And probably easier out of the two to just pull the line of the cheek in here a little bit closer, not quite so wide out there. Uh, and that way, again, it sets that proportion up where the overall height versus the width are, you know, more accurate. Okay? Okay. Yeah. But, you know, we're, you know, you've got it out here. We're talking about moving it in about where the cursor is right, right here. About okay. that. Okay. okay. And that's, you know, so it's not a lot, but it's just, but you'd be surprised at how, what a difference that makes. You know, and also being able to say that the head is actually turned three quarters as well. Because right. then you see the distance across this plane, this part of the plane of the face, is narrower than this side, which is closer to us. Okay. Right? Which is from here to here. And that makes sense. You know, this, is, this should be bigger because it's closer to us. This is a little bit smaller because it's a little bit further away. Okay. All right? All right. Okay, then we have uh, a very happy face here. This is uh, Miss Betty Bates, uh, for those of you who don't know her. Um, and she has one of her lovely paintings behind her. And, uh, you know, it's nice. I mean, it, it's, that's a nice addition, you know, of her kind of at the easel. and It kind of tells a nice story. So that'll be a good, good image to use. Um, this is Bob's write-up about himself, okay? And I think we went over this on Monday. But again, you know, it's, it's kind of short. It's succinct. It's kind of to the point. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, extra fluff in there. It just kind of gets to the point. You know, he's, he's doing it because, hey, you know, he, he loves to paint. And, uh, you know, and he has the time. And so, you know, he's spending his time the way he wants to. Uh, you know, there's, there's his happy mug. Is Bob here? I don't think so. You know, but yeah, that's a, that's a really good picture of him. So, uh, then we have Claudia and, um, uh, we have to, we have to take a, a vote. Okay. We have this picture and we have this picture. Let me blow this up. Which, which do you think is better? The first one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the first one. Okay. First one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She looks uh, a little too serious here. So I think I'm gonna use the first one. Right there. You know. So she looks a little bit happier there. So all right. So that's the one we're gonna go with with Claudia. And uh, India has her uh, in a description. You know and. Uh, and again, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it, it kind of go, you know, I mean, it tells a story, you know, about how she got into, uh, you know, making art and, uh, you know, but it's, it's still, it's very short and it's succinct, you know, good, you know, good write up. Uh, we have her diorama. Did everybody see this the other day? Yeah. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I like this a lot. You know, I, I mean, she had a little bit of fun with it. And she's got a lot of s stuff going on in there. So, uh, we got uh, Mr. John. Okay. That's Jackie's diorama, I think. Yeah, Jackie. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jackie. Uh, we got John here. 
and this is his photo. Um, John, you look a little serious there, man. <laughs> you know? uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I looked. At, I took. I took a couple of them, uh, and I, I like the. I like the serious one. You like the serious one? Okay. I like the serious. I can send the happy one, but I like this one. <laughs> hey, send the one you you know the one you like is the one that we'll put in there. Okay. But that's right. I'm pensive and thoughtful and serious. I see. That's, that's more. That's more me than. <laughs> okay. Than the happy and go lucky guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got you got the write up with that too, right? I do. I do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and. We talked about this on Monday a little bit, but again, uh, I don't know if everybody was here. But uh, the thing I'm noticing about John's work is that John is actually, he had to be staying awake, paying attention, because, <laughs> because actually his paintings are really coming together pretty nicely and he's getting a nice sense of depth and you know, pushing and pulling the space really nicely, managing his color, his contrast. Um, so, and this is lovely. I mean, it's, it really is a very, very nice piece. Um, in fact, probably the nicest piece I've seen you do to date. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, it does, it just works really, really nicely. Uh, the composition is really nice in it. The way your kind of your eye kind of comes in and moves across and up and back and to the mountains. It, you know, it's, it's, fairly well thought out and you've you know handled your color really well uh, and particularly in regards to the intensity of the color you've managed that really well and uh, and this foreground really does pop forward for you so good job on that one thank you thank you um, and this one is a little bit softer it's not nearly as strong as the other piece uh, but it's, it's still, you know, you've got everything working in here. Uh, you could punch up, you know, maybe some more color or something, you know, to pull your eye down here, you know, into the foreground. Uh, right now, it's like the most contrast you have seems to be kind of between this tree line and the water right here. Um, and that tree line is not that close to you, so I don't think it, you know, I don't know that I would have made my highest area of contrast back in here. Uh, the tree trunk comes close, but because even though this is actually in fact darker in value than this, uh, the values around it are generally darker, so it doesn't pop as much. And, and mm -hmm. this, you know, pops quite a bit. So, I guess if I were going to go back and do something to this piece, I guess what I would do is I'd go back in and I would wet this area and I would just kind of lift it back just a little bit, you know, so it's not quite so dark. Now, you still have to get it right. darker than this, but, you know, again, just knocking it back a little bit will help, I think, this come forward. Okay? Okay. Um, and then this lovely piece, which, and where did you say this was from? A movie or something like that? Yeah, it was a, a, a drama on TV. Okay. And it was just a scene in, in, in the storyline, but it was one that I had um, uh, recorded. So I was able to just stop it. And I took a picture of it with my camera <laughs> off my TV screen. Okay. Yeah, the reason I'm asking is, you know, it almost looks like you, you painted yourself in here. <laughs> and it, it, kind of look, it kind of reminds me of you for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I, I had the same thought when I looked at it. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, but it could be. It's, it's like a, you know, kind of a slice out of your life there. Um, right. Yeah. That's a better and, story. <laughs> yeah. Again, you know, it's, it's like, your perspective is getting better, the way you're managing color and contrast and values is all getting better. So uh, yeah, this is, this is working much, much better 
than say even earlier, you know, this year. So yes, right. You're you're showing you're showing a great deal of improvement there, Bob. All right, not Bob, John. Um, I, I just, uh, I'm paying attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's you know that's a good feeling to know that you guys are staying awake. Um, then we have June, and uh, this is her painting of herself. And this is what we're going to use for her, uh, you know, her image of her, which I think works really well. Okay, it's uh, there. There's there's something about this painting of her, and it feels like her. You know, it just it just uh, she's got some of her in there, and uh, I really like that because oftentimes oh, personality. Pardon. The painting of her personality. Yeah, and yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's 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 got something. It may not be like photographically accurate to her, but it feels like her. Um, you know, and it's you know sometimes that's more important, you know, than being, you know, totally accurate. So, but yeah, it's a really really lovely little painting. June, you're here, aren't you? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> so you can hear me talking bad about you, right? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, so, and you just did this, right? Yes, last week. Yeah, okay. See, it can be done. See, somebody, you know, painted themselves last week while I was, you know, away doing other stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice painting, and you've got you know, a nice sense of depth and distance in here. Um, everything, everything's working pretty well in that one, okay? Thank you. So, so good job on that one. And I've got your write-up, but it wouldn't come up with this group of stuff, so we'll look at it toward the end, okay? Uh, okay. This is a lady, she had sent in uh, this piece. And uh, we'd seen this before, but she had sent it in as, as like a really tiny image. So it was really, really pixelated. And, um, you know, this is newspaper and it's wrapped around one of those fabric bolts, uh, you know, the cardboard base for those. And, uh, you know, she used a mixed media approach on it. So she's got some cut paper and it looks like some ink or paint. And uh, I'm not sure whether these are applied or painted or what. Uh, but overall, I mean, you know, it makes a really, really nice piece. I'm um, just trying to get her to be a little more conscientious about photographing her work and trying to get it as a large enough file where it's not pixelated uh, to such a degree. Because, I mean, you know, these are like tiny. They're almost like just little thumbnails that she sent. So, um, this is Linda, Linda Lim. And uh, it's not what I would have expected from Linda, you know, really. But, you know, because I've seen some of her work before. But, yeah, this is, uh, this is something a little bit new and different. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that she's, you know, playing and experimenting with stuff. And overall, I mean, it's, it's a really nice kind of graphic feel to the painting. Uh, the only thing I would say about it, uh, it's like with the, where did my cursor, there it is. Um, you know, with the face and the head, all of that's working pretty well. Uh, when she gets down here to like the flowers and, or whatever this is, I'm having to assume that this is closer to us. And so she could have taken some of these paint strokes and make them, you know, much larger and bolder uh, so that they really jump forward. Because right now they're, they're kind of small and broken up. The other thing she could have done is uh, have more variety of sizes, you know, have some really large ones, have some small ones, have some in between. And uh, and again, that would help. I thought I thought um, that was supposed to be kind of muted so that the face would stand out. 
you know, the, the, when you're talking about the flowers at? Yeah, this is yeah. nice. Oh. Yeah, this is Linda's, right? Yeah. No, this, this is Bernice talking. Yeah, I know it's Bernice talking. Okay, yeah. All right. But so I was saying that I was saying that she may have muted the flowers so that the face is the is the big focal point. The flower is just background. Yeah, yeah. And it's you know, if you look at the color here, um, you know, the color is fine. It's mm -hmm. the size relationship between these because they're all kind of the same, right? And so oh, yeah. maybe the red flowers were bigger, right? Or you know, the uh, yellow flower was bigger different sizes would have made this you know a lot more interesting to look at than having everything down there and all kind of about the same size okay okay so, thank you right. um let's see and then we have a uh this is richard and uh, this is supposed to be a panda right richard it is a panda. Okay. All right. So uh, I've never seen a panda with a red hat, but okay, there's a first time for everything, right? First time so, for everything. Yep. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he kind of reminds me of that cartoon, uh, Curious George. Do you remember seeing that? Yep. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a similar sort of character, you know, style and everything. Um, have you got any reference on pandas? I had looked at it and no. Okay, yeah. Go back and look at pandas, you know. Uh, they have a very distinctive pattern on them. Uh, this, this is kind of more reminiscent, I think, of a, a penguin than a panda. You know, but go back. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, go back and take a look at uh, you know at at pandas, and uh, Actually, it's a little stuffed animal. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, go back. Go back and take a look at a panda, even a stuffed one, and uh, you know, because there's something, you know, you know the the face doesn't quite read you know bear kind of shape in there but uh but yeah go back anytime you should you try something like that i mean it's a great idea but uh you know go back and look at like the animal and you know see what they really look like and then try to you know stylizing them is fine right simplifying them is fine but you know simplify them but understand the shapes and things that make them look the way they look and then try to incorporate some of that into your artwork. Okay. Now we have the the moment we've all been waiting for. Okay, this is Richard's drawing uh, from the uh, email that I sent with the steps and how to develop a human face. Right. And Richard, I have to yeah. honestly tell you. Okay. Uh, other than, you know, really other than the proportions uh, of the mouth, you know, the head overall looks pretty good. You know, the relationship of the nose to the eyes, um, you know, you, you saw the structure for the eye socket and then the cheekbone, you know, moving forward here. Uh, that works out pretty well. Uh, mainly it's just that the mouth seems to be way, way, way too close to the bottom of the nose and it's not really big enough because that ball would be a fairly large ball about this size, okay? Which means that the mouth would kind of end, the corner of the mouth would end over here and over here, right? So, uh, so really the only thing I see about this that seems to be off proportionally in any significant way is the, uh, the size of the ball that the mouth sits on, right? Now, do you understand what I was trying to say about drawing that mouth, you know, in the uh, original uh, thing that I sent you? Do you, under, do you understand what's going on there? 
No, I never understand the mouse. I have trouble with them. Okay. All right. So what happens, and this is good for all of you to know. All right. So where the base of the nose is, right, this one third line, uh, you can attach the top of this ball. Okay. And it's not just a circle. You have to think of it as a sphere because that's what it is. It's a round ball. Okay. And that's, you know, the mouth sits on that ball. And so it begins kind of at, you know, the base of where the nose meets the front plate of the face. But then from there, where it ends is somewhere, you know, just right at the very beginning of the chin, wherever the chin begins to protrude, uh, even out slightly. So the ball would generally be bigger, right? And depending on the person, okay, that sh shape can change a little bit, right? In some people, it's more of a round sphere. In some people, it's more of a donut-looking thing. Um, you know, so you, it, and the proportions change, right, from person to person. So you really have to look at that in particular on the face and then, you know, get that in there. Uh, also notice where the ends of it line up with, and usually that's about the middle of the eye. Okay. It's, it's not on the inside. It's not on the outside. It's usually, you know, like right kind of dead center. If you drop the line straight down. So you see the ball would kind of begin there and probably end about here. So it would be a much bigger ball. Right. And, and so that, you know, where that, circle is or the ball itself where it meets the plane of the face that's where the corner of your mouth is going to be okay yeah sure. usually people's mouths are you know they vary a little bit you know based on how wide and or tall that spherical form is but you know the corner of the mouth is always going to go to the edge of it okay it's not going to end out here just floating in the middle. It's going to go from one side all the way across to the other. Okay. And as you put it on there, if you can think of it as being a ball, then what you're not going to see is you're not going to see like a straight line across there. Okay. You know, for the division between the lips, it's got to move around, you know, that sphere. And depending on whether it's above your eye level or below will determine what you see, whether you see it, you know, more like a frown or more like a smile, right? If you're up a little bit higher, then it's going to look more like a smile. If you're, if you're a little below, say the chin, then, uh, then it's going to look like a frown. It's going to turn downward slightly. Okay. Does that make any sense to you? Yes. When do you get rid of the lines? Oh, well, you can get rid of the lines, you know, after you, after you get a basic, uh, you know, form and the proportions are correct and you feel like they're correct, then you can just take a paper towel and I wouldn't erase them. I would just take a paper towel and I'd rub them back, right, to soften them so that they're still kind of there, but they basically mainly disappear. And then you can start laying your values in over them, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you know, having, having them there, you know, it doesn't really hurt anything. Um, as long as, you know, they're fairly faint and they're not really taking over the drawing. So, uh, and then this is Richard's uh, write-up about himself. And it's, uh, it's very complimentary to me, but Richard, I really do want this not to be about me. I want it to be about you, okay? And uh, what, I, what I really want is like, why, why does Richard want to make art? All right, what do you get out of, out of, out of making art? on a personal level, okay? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, all right. 
And, you know, I mean, the length is fine. It's just, again, you know, talk about you. <laughs> okay. You know, that would be a big help. Um, Surin's not here, is he? How many people we got here? No, I don't think so. All right, this is a, this is a painting he sent in. And I think this is his latest painting. Um, he posted it on Facebook and then a couple of days later, he sent it to me. Um, now, Surin is painting in, in what we would generally refer to as a very impressionistic uh, style, and that's fine. You know. um, my thing with Surin and, and with really all of you is I want to make you more aware of how you use the brush, and particularly if you're going to pursue trying to do a style like this, because the thing that's really going to mess you up is that if you use the same size brush and you use it with the same length a paint stroke or width, then how is this going to be, you know, able to go backward in space, uh, you know, compared to this, if they're the same size, right? So your brush strokes are going to get a little larger and bolder as you move toward the bottom, and they're going to get a little finer and smaller as you move to the top. Anybody know why? Closer to you. Say what? The front was closer to you should be bigger. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're, we're trying to, in a very subtle way, say that the bottom of the canvas is closer to us and that the top of the canvas is further away. Right. So if that's the case, it makes more sense to have the bolder, larger brush strokes down here and the smaller, um, you know, and finer grain, uh, you know, paint strokes back here. And, and that way it is automatically, that always, pardon? Is that, is that always true that the bottom of the painting is closer to you than the rest of the painting? Pretty much so, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, unless you're doing some kind of weird perspective where you're hanging out, you know, upside down out of a plane, taking a picture down onto buildings or something like that, then, you know, then it might get a little distorted and, you know, parts toward the top or the middle might be closer to you. Um, but yeah, if it's, if it's a pretty typical landscape where you're on the ground and about the same level as your subject, then yeah and more than likely what's closer down to the bottom of the canvas is going to be closer to you. Okay. See? Because just imagine it this way, you're standing there looking at her, right? And somewhere down here, about right there, your feet are down there. See? But you just, you know, they're just slightly out of the picture plane. So you really can't see them. But you're, you're kind of grounded here looking at her. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we talked, did everybody see these? Yes. Yeah. This is a. Yes, right. Yeah. All that, yeah. Yeah. Did anybody miss these? Anybody? Okay. You've all seen them. Okay. So we, we won't bother. Uh, okay. Well, then we have uh, this. And this is Surin's painting. Uh, he wants to use this as his mugshot. Um, and, you know, it's good. I'll probably crop it. Probably crop it a little bit, you know, tighter. Uh, and crop, you know, his granddaughters out of it. So it's all about him. But, you know, it's, it's a good image. Um, we have this lovely young lady here. This is uh, Susan Adair. And... Uh, she sent in her picture. I'm, I'm waiting on her to send in her write-up on her. Um, I wonder who this could be. This must be Veronica Jackson. Okay. So, Veronica. I it got a is. I got a question for you, dear. Okay. Okay. In, in our conversation today, what can you tell me 
about this painting and, and what might you do differently about it? I have to use different size brushes uh -huh. so that the bottom comes to you and the top goes away from you okay. because all of the strokes are the same size. They are. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty consistent. So what it does is it sort of flattens out the space, doesn't it? It does. And I was trying to figure out how to fix that. And you've answered the question. Well, that is a way. Okay. Now there's another thing that you need okay. to do. You know what that is. Do you know what that is? Um, I think it's my values and colors. Uh, well, it has more to do with your color than your value. Okay. So what should change about your color? The darker color should be closer. Yeah, there should be more contrast here at the bottom, right? Yes. Now, now there's five different types of contrast, right? So you have yes. value, you know, how dark or how light something is, right? And so yeah. it, makes, it makes more sense that like right here, you know, this is almost like your highest degree of contrast in value, right? Right here. Okay. Between this dark and light. Okay, so that helps and that helps push that forward. Um, hard and soft edges, right? So where the edges are sharper down here, as they move back, they're gonna get a little bit softer, okay? Until, okay. and you've kind of done, you kind of, you've kind of done it by changing value more than by actually softening the edge. Because some of these are pretty sharp back here. And if these edges were just a little bit blurred or softer, then this would sit back more for you and this would come forward, all right? Okay. Uh, the other thing is what we call intensity, okay? And right now, this is a very intense painting. You know, you've got this very light area up here, and then you move into this very, very rich, very high saturation gold color. And, um, and if this is going to be further away, then it needs to be kind of modified so that it's a little bit grayer, right? Yeah. Less, less intense. And that would help move that back. Now, the good news is, you see the way you painted this in is fairly blended and smooth, right? Yes. And because it is softer, it sits back behind the purple. You see that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, plus, the purple has a lot of hard edges on it. So, again, it's pulling it forward. Now, again, what I would do is I would just neutralize that a little bit, gray it down. Okay. Um, now, that doesn't mean make it darker. That just makes it less intense. Okay? Uh, and, and, you know, that way that color sits back. And then right in here, uh, I would soften all these edges up a little bit. Okay. Because they're one a little bit too hard and as you do that you also might take some of the color and you might gray it down a little bit okay now there's several different ways you could do that okay there's the hard way which is go back in and mix all those new colors right and you know change the value and then carefully paint them in i don't recommend that what i recommend is that you take a little bit of yellow a little, little, and I mean a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of white, and then you, is this acrylic, or is this oil? No, it's oil. Okay, all right, so if it's oil, yeah, take, take a, you know, a little bit of turpentine, you know, thin that out real thin, and of course, wait until it's totally dry. Don't do it while it's wet. You know, okay. you don't want your, can, you know, your painting running off your canvas. Uh, in front of you. So, uh, you know, wait till it's dry and then glaze this over with a combination of that little bit of yellow and a little bit of white together. And the thing is, you know, when you put it on, 
it might look a little bit milky, you know, but you'll still be able to see through it. Okay. Uh, if you can't see through it, then you've got too much paint in there. Okay. Uh, but, you know, just glaze over it. I would leave it laying flat on a table while you did that. And again, just really just over this area right here. Now, okay. I'm going to do it over the yellow as well. Okay. That's another way of fading that back, uh, you know, taking the intensity out of it. So, so you could, you know, basically put that glaze over both of these areas uh, and begin to push them back a little bit. Okay. Okay. You know, it's, uh, you know, there's lots of different ways of getting there, but you know, mainly I just want to, you know, use this as you know, kind of a, a good exercise for learning how to push and pull space. You know, how do I pull the bottom forward? How do I push, you know, the upper part back? Okay? Okay. All right. Then we go to this piece. All right. Now, what can you tell me about it? I was playing with my colors. I see that. And it looks like you were playing with a palette knife. Yes. Okay. And, um, and that's great. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're playing with the palette knife. Uh, the thing is, if you're going to do stuff like this, and, and this is a great thing to, uh, you know, to play with, uh, try, try using it uh, so that you can learn how to use that palette knife. And so, you know, make, you know, specific shapes. And, uh, you know, just practice making different shapes and raising one area over another so you get different levels um, okay. as you build up the paint. And just, you know, kind of see what you can do with it. The other thing is, you know, um, learn how to scrape and cut back through the paint. And, you know, don't just use the point, you know, use the side as well. Okay. Uh, and just to kind of play with and get different effects. On, on your surface, okay? Okay. All right. Um, you know, basically, I mean, you know, this looks like you maybe used a palette knife on this as well. I and, did. Yeah, and I would, I would kind of recommend the same thing. Again, slow down a little bit, be more specific about your shapes that you're making with that thicker paint, um, and think about your edges. You know, think about, okay, if I need a sharp edge, then I'm going to leave it here. If uh, I need a soft edge on the other side, then what am I going to do to soften that down? And you might be able to do it with a palette knife. Uh, more than likely, you're going to have to take a brush, you know, a small to medium-sized brush, and just go back and feather that softer edge in there. And what you'll find is that you'll start getting a, I mean, a more dimensional form in there if these edges are not equal. Like, see this side to this side, right? They can't be the same. Does that make sense to you? It does. Okay, all right. And then uh, last but not least, we have this lovely landscape. And what can you tell me about this one? Well, it's a landscape, and I was working with my colors. There's water in the that's coming to you, a, a lake or a body of water. Yeah. And here in the bottom. Yes, and then the mountains are. You're looking at the mountains in the background with the sky. I need to lighten up the sky a bit. Um. Yeah, you could. You know, I mean. I don't, it doesn't really bother me, actually. Um, my thought is this. Again, you know, it's this push-pull thing. How are you going to get this edge, right, to move backward and let this body of water, like the shoreline here, move forward? What can you do to, you know, help create that illusion? I'd have to I'd have to use the glazing technique in the back, and in the front I would use some just to soften those lines. 
Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. Well, you see, my, my thought is this. Okay. Now you could glaze this. Um, and again, you could use kind of the same kind of glaze where you got a little bit of white, maybe, you know, with a little touch of color in there. Could be almost any color that you want to use. And just, you know, do a light glaze on here. And what will happen is it will unify all these colors and, you know, kind of push it further back. Um, you know, you have to be careful. Don't overdo it up here. Okay. Um, that's going to keep care of this middle area right here, which is fine, that you don't have to mess with. And then the foreground in here, you're going to want to mess with, because what you're going to want to do is you want to go, you're going to want to create a higher degree of contrast, which means you don't really have to soften the edges back here. In fact, having sharper, crisper edges okay. um, would be fine because, again, it's closer to you. Um, the other thing you, you can do, though, is try to get more intense color in this lower area. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, you know, really push like the reds and greens and, and things that now that doesn't mean make them darker. It just means make them more intense. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So, you know, in doing that, that should help pull all of this forward, you know, push this into the middle ground, push this into the background. And again, you know, your clouds, things like that, you know, I think are fine. Um, now, when you're glazing this area back here, you could also glaze some of these clouds back. Okay. Yeah, probably what I would do. I wouldn't glaze, you know, all of this. I would kind of start maybe about here, from here up, and just kind of okay. grab and see if you can soften it a little bit. And uh, what that's going to do, that's going to help this cloud right here pull forward. And uh, and it's gonna you know really push all of this back a little bit further for you, okay? Okay. All right. So anybody got any uh, comments, questions, yada yada yada? No. No. Wow. Well, we're kind of out of work, and it's only two fifty one. Wow. Okay. Anybody want to talk about the weather? It's beautiful. <laughs> Gardening. <laughs> you know, anything else? Outside and paint. It is. It, in fact, today would be a perfect day to go out and paint. You know, the sun is really nice. It's uh, just slightly overcast, so that you know things are just the light is a little bit softer. And um, you know, if you can find yourself a good spot, you know, out there in a field somewhere where you can see the horizon line. Uh, you got some nice cloud shapes and things out there today too, you know, to paint. So, um, so yeah, getting outside would be be a great idea. So. Hey Charles. Yeah. Yeah, I did get the link uh, to that Senior Connect YouTube uh, program. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> wait a minute. Oh wait a minute. The Senior Connect. The demonstration, the face demonstration you did. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. For online, I uh, Nicole sent me the link. Hang on one second, I need to. Yeah, not take a phone. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So Nicole sent you a link. A link to the YouTube uh, presentation of that. Okay. Uh, the airing of the. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen that. You know, uh, she didn't send it to me yet. So, uh, do you I mind? Can go, I can forward that. Yeah, if you would. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to take a look at it. So. Yeah. Okay. Then, um, what, what is it on? I, I didn't get that one. I know. Uh, no, there's a thing that Charles has sent to everyone, but Nicole sent a reply, thank you, attached the link again. So you should actually, all of you should get two meal. Uh, one from Charles, one from Nicole. Thank you to Charles or something like that. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I got I got the original invitation. Um, yeah, I haven't seen the whole program, and so 
so yeah, if uh, if I can find a link to that, then I'll go go view it. But you know, if if you don't have it, I'll send that out again so everybody can watch it. But it was an interview that I did. And John was on there as well, and uh, it's it's called Connect. It's through FGTV in Fulton County, and uh, you know they're just talking about you know the art program and uh, stuff like that. And I did a, a drawing demo. So, in fact, the drawing demo I sent you. Pardon? Oh, if that is an interview, no, I didn't get it too. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, if I get it, I'll send it back out to everybody. Okay. okay. All right. Anybody got anything else? Oh, uh, did everybody get? Uh, they're doing a Zoom. I guess, you know, conference or whatever. Uh, they've got like four or five days. Uh, and I sent out the uh, email for it, all of you, yesterday, I think. Was it yesterday? Yeah. Um, and it's basically, you know, they want to have a chance to talk to everybody and kind of see how everybody's feeling about possibly, you know, going back into the centers and, and you know, what it is that uh, your thoughts are about going back and what you would like to see, you know, when you went back as far as safety and stuff like that, okay? So my, my request is that you pick one of those times and dates and attend, you know, one of those meetings because it's with you know, the leadership from the Department of Senior Services. And, uh, and they kind of need to hear from you guys so that, you know, when they do this, they can do it in a good way, okay? I sat in on one of the sessions and it's really worth it. If you, everybody should attend one and express your opinions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, in fact, you know, since I'm an old fuddy-duddy as well, uh, you know, they've even asked me to sit in on one and I'm going to uh, actually tomorrow. You know, I'm going to be attending one. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think the more input they get, probably the better job they'll do at opening up the centers and making a determination of how they're going to do that. Um, my expectation, you know, um, they, they wanted to try to open up the centers somewhere in July, probably around, you know, mid to end of July. Um, my guess is that may not happen in July. It may be a little bit further down the line. Um, but whenever they do it, you know, there'll probably uh, be limited class sizes. So they probably won't, you know, you're not going to find 15 people in a classroom. Okay. It's probably going to be about six to eight at the most, depending on the size of the classroom. Like in the studio, we could probably accommodate like eight people. If it's back in one of the clay rooms or something like that, it's probably going to be down to, you know, like five or six. Um, and that way, you know, people can spread out a little bit, you know, and, uh, you know, keep a little bit of distance and safety. Okay. Any thoughts? Okay. My, uh, my thought is I just have to ask who has had both shots yeah well that and, I, think, I think that's pretty much so going to be a requirement you know if you're going to go back into the senior center you're going to have to have had your vaccination you know uh, i don't i don't see them letting people in there who have not you know i know that all of the staff has had both of their vaccinations you know that's one of the things with fulton county they really pushed was to get all all of the staff members, you know, fully vaccinated and stuff. And, uh, and that way we could be safe, you know, being in a work environment together. Well, it sounds like they have to have Fulton County to buy into that because people that aren't agreeing to do that, mm -hmm. they don't want them to feel left out and to feel discriminated against. So that's part of the uh, discussion right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it probably is. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, at the end of the day though, uh, Betty, 
you know, I think they're going to be fairly cautious about, you know, allowing, you know, everybody in there. Uh, yeah, I would hope. I mean, because there is an alternative. If mm -hmm. they don't want to get it, they can do online classes. And if they don't have computer access and they've got other issues, but yeah. um, for safety, I mean, it just seems like, you know, airlines do it, uh, other businesses do it that require it. So it should be, yeah. I would think they should have the right to require it. Yeah, I think they do. Uh, Richard, you got a question? I don't drive anymore. So this type of program for me is <coughs> very much uh, appreciated. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, you know, like I said, you know, attending one of those Zoom classes, you know, that's something you could pass on, you know, and, and make them aware of. Because I'm sure that, you know, over the last year, a lot of people's circumstances have changed. Uh, and, you know, people who maybe had access to transportation before may not now. And, uh, you know, my, my discussion with Sabrina so far, and, and I think I mentioned it this morning, uh, you know, I'm, I'm personally <laughs> looking for a way that I can continue to do these online Zoom classes. And Zoom classes are not going to go away, right? I've already been told that. You know, uh, this, is, this is a vehicle that they have found to be useful and successful and effective. And they're going to keep, you know, a lot of classes still available on Zoom. And that particularly benefits people who have transportation issues or have, uh, you know, health issues and, and don't feel comfortable going back into the center. Um, you know, and also, also you, you get to meet a lot of different people on Zoom, a lot of different professors on Zoom, because right. before you were, you, were, you were locked into whatever center you went to, you know, exactly. yeah. you didn't get to, yeah. Yeah, and so see, you have a whole variety, you know, of different types of programming out there that right. you may not have had available to you depending on the center you went to. Absolutely. Right. Did, they, did they have uh, uh, demonstration classes? For instance, if somebody wanted to learn how to use the, say, palette knife on a flower, if you could show them on a demonstration how to use the palette knife with the on a flower or a person or a rock or whatever. Right. Uh, and what, and what exactly that you're talking about in mixing for a glaze and how it should be put on, that well, type of thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we've got a couple of different instructors doing our classes right now. And, you know, Kermit uh, in particular, I've seen a couple of his classes. And, you know, that's basically what he's doing is, you know, he's painting and he's talking about uh, what he's doing and why he's doing it. You know, and, and so people can kind of watch. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like the uh, portrait painting demo that we did this morning, right? Did you see that? No, I did not get, I didn't get, uh, the morning is very difficult for me to get to till about 1130 okay. because I've got a lot to do. Okay, well, we, we watched uh, Max Ginsburg, we watched three. I, I saw a part of that. Okay. But, yeah. uh, and the funny thing was, that's how I started uh, my self-portrait. And I kept painting over it and over and over it. I bet I, like I have, I sent, I sent it to you. I have about 20 layers and it looks like, um, it could be a Charlie McCarthy doll with the line, the linear lines to, because I did it in acrylics. I, I can't do the oils and, and it's very hard to keep the acrylics uh, soft enough, long enough to uh, keep going over it. Yeah. Well, and the thing with acrylic is, yeah, you've got to, you got to take a slightly different approach. Um, because it does dry so quickly, you know, you yeah. don't have the time to work, you know, one wet edge into another wet edge. Right. Um, you know, that is unless you decide to work with a, a medium called a retarder to slow down the drying time on your acrylics. Uh, I read. I read somewhere also. If you use a humidifier, that um, it, it it gives you a little more time. It does. But even if you work on a damp day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Not, not, it's not a whole lot of time, but a little. No, more. no, no, no. 
but but you know i mean in working with acrylics um you know on a wet rainy day you know it may take half an hour or 45 minutes for them to dry where mm -hmm. on a warm summer day like today they may be dry in 10 minutes <laughs> you know and it's and that's exactly it it's all to, to blend into it but that didn't work either yeah but it's well that's that's all because of the amount of humidity actually in the air yeah. you know where you're at but yeah. and see that's where adding that retarder medium into your paint will slow that down okay it, now, it just called just retarder medium yeah it's just it's called a retarder. Of any kind? yeah it's just called retarder it's called retarder yeah, it's, a, it's an acrylic retarder and it's like a clear liquid uh, you only put like three or four drops in in like a, a pile of your paint and just okay. work it in with a palette knife. And what it will do is it will slow the uh, the drying time down on the acrylic to maybe around two or three hours. Hmm. So you, you have that wet paint. So it's more like oil paint in that sense that you can blend and mush around with it. And the problem is when you start making mud with it, that... Yeah. You, know, you got to stop and wait a couple hours for it to dry, or you got to scrape it off. And yeah. Right. So, you know, but there's there's different ways around that. Now, there's also, um, I think it's Liquitex uh, has a what they call an open acrylic system. All right, and uh, and that's specifically what it's called, open acrylics. And what that actually means is that they've already put something in the acrylic itself uh, and it comes out of the tube with it already mixed in. And what it will do is it, will, it won't let it dry until you spray on a, uh, a chemical base that will then activate it and then it will harden and dry. And so that's Liquitex Open Acrylics. I don't think I'm gonna try that because I just filled in my colors with the acrylic paint. Uh -huh. and, I, and I'm not gonna try and buy more paints. I yeah. think it would be easier for me to try the, uh, when it, whenever I can get to the uh, store to try the, uh, the uh, right. starter. Yeah, now the other way, and, and this is again, specifically about acrylics, if you're working with acrylics, you know, my approach to it is I, I treat it pretty much so like an oil painting. And so what I'll do is I'll get my composition and I'll get my big blocks of color, right, in place. And, you know, usually by the time I get back to them, they're dry. And I'm okay with that. Because once I get those big blocks, then I'll go into my smaller blocks and put those in. And I'll keep working from bigger shapes to smaller shapes. And when I finally get down to the area where it's the focal point, you know, then I'm finally working with a fairly small brush and I'm repainting that whole area with wet paint. And I'm just working in that area, keeping the paint wet uh, until, you know, I finish it. Uh, and then if I need to do that in other areas, I'll, I'll move to those and, you know, keep working. But, you know, I'll have like 90, you know, like 90% 90 of my painting done you know, with just, you know, big, you know, simplified, you know, patches and shapes of color. Right. I could do that with a landscape, but it, it's hard when you don't do portraits and you're trying to do a portrait for the first or second, you know what I mean, a real, yeah. that, that, I, that's got to go slower than that. And, and yeah. so, so here's, okay, again, you know, so yeah. if you, if you took, and you can do it either way. You could take a pencil or something like that. You could draw out, you know, and find all of the planes of your face and where okay. the features go. And, uh, and then make sure that that's fixed and in place so that it doesn't go away. And then use, you know, kind of a thin general color for a flesh tone, go over it, which is gonna ghost that drawing back. And then, you know, put in a couple of values, you know, like three steps. Where are your shadows? Where are your lights? Where are your midtones, right? Uh, and then let that sit up and dry. 
and then go back in and start working on an eye or the end of the nose, you know, and just keep working from that point, you know, okay. to the rest of the features and, you know, rework those areas until you get them the way you want. That may be easier. Yeah. And, you know, I, and again, you can do it with a landscape, you can do it with still life, you can do it with a portrait. Okay. Or okay. even a picture. See? But again, you know, it's working. I'm working portraits in uh, acrylic too, so. And I'm not ready for all yet. <laughs> right. Well, and, you know, honestly, you know, I like oil paint, you know, because, um, you know, A, the color doesn't shift uh, a lot and it stays wet and I can get in there and I can manipulate and play with it and I can blend edges and stuff. Um, and I like to, you know, use a fair amount of paint on the surface so I can build it up, you know, fairly thick. Um, but, you know, in all honesty, I mean, you can do, you know, just as well with acrylic these days. And the color in acrylic has gotten so much better at not changing so much. Uh, you know, so it's just a matter of preference, you know, and, and what you're more comfortable with. But I work with both, you know. Mm -hmm. And in fact, a lot of artists these days work with both on the same painting. Yeah. You know, what they'll do is they'll start off and they'll do their big color blocks and shapes with acrylic because it will set up and dry so fast. And then they'll go back and they'll work over it with oil. You know? yeah, unless you can't use the oils. Right. Yeah. 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 And in that case, you just stay with the acrylics. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's what I'm yeah. maybe not necessary to do. Yeah. But there's, you know, there's yeah. lots of different ways of working. Uh, and, you know, you just have to find the way that's comfortable for you and good for your health, you know. And the only thing I can tell you is I don't care what medium it is, don't eat it. It's not good for you. <laughs> you yeah, got to be mighty hungry to taste some of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, the, the red does not taste like strawberries, okay? I can tell you yeah. right now. That's just personal experience. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't eat a tube of red. It's not good for you, okay? Okay. All right. Anybody else? Comments? Questions? Yeah, Richard? I have to go. Okay. I have to go. All right. Well, we're all going to go. So have a good Thursday, and we will see you on Friday morning, hopefully. Okay? Sounds good. All right. There we can. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Okay, bye, June.